Hello and welcome everyone. In today's class, we'll be talking about database design. And before we start this class, I just want to apologize for the long break we've had with this particular series. Um, in the past, we've spoken about data. In our past videos, we've explored data. We've also explored how data are generated. We would also talk about um, database. We spoke about what a database management system is, and we also discussed the role of a database management system in a GIS. So I'll be linking the videos in the description um, if you want to check them out. We also spoke about relational database and um, the concept of primary and foreign keys. So in this video, we'll be talking about um, database design. So let's dive right in. What are the steps when designing a database? We basically have um, three steps. We have the conceptual design, we have the logical design, and we have the physical design. So this video will be um, basically about the conceptual design, and in the next video, we'll speak about the logical design. So the conceptual data model, it provides the foundation. It's, it's basically a foundation for the physical design of the database schema. And um, in this process, this process really requires a lot of brainstorming. And that's why I have the um, brainstorming image in the background, because, because we first have to understand the goal, why are we building the database? And from there, we could move on. We have to understand the requirements of the database. We have to identify the data types that needs to be stored in the database. And we also need to know the relationship um, between these um, data. So um, I have here that, a conceptual model represents the concept of the problem and that's what i've tried to explain earlier we have to like understand the problem we have to understand why we are creating the database and also the conceptual data model it represents the entities the attributes and the relationship between them in the following slides we'll be talking about what entity is what attributes are and what relationship also means in the concept of logical design when we are creating our database so the first we have is the entity so basically, an entity, it's a concept that is very important for our application. They are normally expressed as nouns. So I have here that um, entities are distinct objects or concept of the real world that needs to be represented in the database. Now, we need to understand that whenever we have um, a problem, for example, we have this database we want to create for um, a library. To, to detect what the entities are, we have to look out for the nouns. Whenever we see nouns, then it, it signifies um, there's a possibility for that noun to be an entity because these are what are important to create our tables in our database. So let us look at this example. We have, we have to create a database that will store information about a library. The library has books. So you could see that I have boldened the books and I've also changed the color to red. So the library has books. So um, the book is the noun right and they also also the library has borrowers so these are people that would like lend the books in the, in the library so we can see from this question these are the two entities we have in our um, example so let's read further each book can be borrowed by multiple borrowers and each borrower can borrow multiple book books for for each book we are interested in storing the isbn the author and the book id and for for the borrower, we're interested in um, we're interested in storing the borrower's ID, the name, and email. So from this example, we can see the entities in this problem are basically um, the books and the borrowers because those are the two distinct or those are the two distinct objects or the concept of the real world that we'll be representing in our database. Next, we'll be talking about relationships. After we have identified the entities, we need to find the relevant relationship and um, when we look at our problem in the real world, relationships are usually expressed as verbs. And this relationship, it also defines how entities relate with one another. And we can have a um, different type of relationship. We can have one-to-one -one relationship, one-to-many, and many-to-many. -many. So let's explain the one-to-one -one relationship. A one-to-one -one relationship is a relationship whereby one entity has one cardinality to another entity. So let's look at this example here. We have a company has just one CEO. There's only one CEO in a company, right? And also one CEO is associated with one company. If what I'm trying to explain here is not clear, don't worry, very soon we'll um, explain properly with more examples. 
So let's talk about one to many relationship. We have this example whereby a teacher can have many students. That is one teacher to many students. So that is trying to say one to many. But we have each student as only one teacher. So in this example, we are trying to see the one to many relationship. And also we have many to many relationship. The example we have here is whereby we have a product that can be sold in many stores. It's a product, right? But it can be stored in many stores. And also, each store can sell many products. So it's, it's a relationship whereby the cardinality between the entities are many to many. So I hope we understand that. And next, we'll be talking about attributes. Okay, before we before we go to talk about attributes, so let us look at the let's look at the relationship in our question. So from the previous example, we add this question whereby we we, we want to create a database. And um, we need to store information about a library. And the library has books. It also has borrowers. Each book can be borrowed by multiple borrowers. And remember, I mentioned earlier that um, when we talk about entities, we have to look out for the nouns. Now, the nouns are most likely the um, concept of the real world we are trying to represent in our database. But when we talk about um, relationships, the we have to look out for verbs. Right, you have to look out for like um, action words. So those action words are most likely what are going to be our relationship. So we could see here that I have boldened the burrow and I've also made it like an orange color. So now the burrow here, it's what uh, is, is what is linking the entities together, right? Is what is linking the book and the borrowers together because a book has to be borrowed by a borrower. So that link, um, that verb, that action is basically what is um, signifying the relationship between the entities. So that is basically relationship and this relationship in this particular example. So let's look at the cardinality for this relationship. So we have for each book, we're interested. Okay, sorry. Um, each book can be borrowed by multiple borrowers. So multiple signifies many, right? And each borrowers can borrow multiple books. So now in this situation, we have many to many relationship between the books and the borrower. It's fine if you don't understand right now, we would simplify it further in the comment slide. So the next is attributes. So attributes basically are properties of the entities or relationships. They answer the question, what do we need to know about this entity? So what do we need to know about the entities? So in the example we've been using so far, we can see for each book, we're interested in storing the ISBN. So now that is the attribute of the book. That is what we're interested in storing about the book. Not just the ISBN. We're interested in storing the author. We're also interested in storing the book ID. And um, for the borrower, we're interested in storing the borrower ID, the borrower's name, and the borrower's email address. So this is how we can keep track of everything in the database. So we spoke about the entities, the relationship, and the attributes. So now let's do a little bit of demo. And um, in this demo, we'll be demonstrating, we'll be demonstrating um, this example we've been having so far. And the example basically, we have to, so let us identify the entity, right? So we know the entities we have here is the book and we have the borrowers. So to, to um, create an EHA diagram, so we, we basically represent the conceptual models with ER diagram. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention that um, all along. So we have to represent the conceptual model in entity relationship diagram. It's called ER diagram. So we're representing them in that diagram. So let's let's go ahead and um, draw the, the diagram. So let's insert a particular shape. So we have different shapes we use for the entities and the relationship. So when it comes to the entities, we use um, rectangles. So I'll just draw I just draw a rectangle here. So our first entity, right, is the books. So we can just um, give it books or book. Then um, our second entity, the second entity we have, the second entity we have is looking at the question is the borrowers. Those are the two entities we, we have in the question. So I would just draw another box. You know what, let me just copy this box and paste it. So this is our this is our second this is our second entity which is the um, borrower. So we just rename this. All right. So we have our books and we have our borrowers. 
and now um the next thing we need to do is to link them right so we have to link them by this borrowed now to 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 link these two the shape to link them is the diamond shape the diamond shape is what we use to to link so we have this shape and um, i can just have one this way all right so now we have the attribute so the the, the name of the um, attribute is so let us just use loan instead of um, using borrowed so i can just say loan so we have we have books and we have um, borrowers now uh, this borrower would loan a particular book a particular book will be loaned to a particular borrower so we can link them up with lines so we just have to like um, insert net lines and the same thing here all right so now that is that about the um, entity relationship diagram and one more thing we need to represent in this diagram um, are the attributes so we need to put the attributes so now for each book we're interested in storing the isbn we are also interested in storing the author and the book number so those are like the three attributes we're interested in so to store the attributes you just like draw a line so let the line touch this just at the edge it's fine at the edge then i'll just duplicate these lines so we're interested in storing the following attributes we're interested in storing the isbn so we just um we link we link it to this so we're interested in storing the ISBN. So I just insert the text box and you know have that store the ISBN. We're also interested in storing the auto. So I'll just have another um, text box to store the name of the auto. And finally for the books, we are also interested in storing the book ID. So we we, we store the book ID as well. And now for the borrowers, we're interested in um, the first is the borrower's ID. So let's get the borrower's ID. And finally, we're interested in storing the name and the email of the of the borrower. Before we wrap up this video, we have to mention the cardinality. I, I really forgot that. So um, from the question, we realized that we have many to many relationship, like the cardinality between each entity is many to many. Because if you look at the question, we have each book can be borrowed by multiple borrowers so um we have here let's say we have one book for example so let's say we have one book let's just put it for one book a book um so we represent the cardinalities the re, re, the cardinalities is represented with numbers and alphabet so we have one book can be borrowed by um, each book can be borrowed by multiple borrowers. So if you have here, we have each book can be borrowed by multiple borrowers. So we we'll just have something here, and here we would have a capital M. So a book, a particular book, can be borrowed by multiple borrowers. So that's the um, that's a way to show the cardinalities, the relationship, and also um, the placement of this is um, it varies. You know, people basically place this sometimes one will be placed here or m would be placed here but for me it just um i think going from left to right just makes sense so one book can be borrowed by many persons and also uh, if you go back to the question we can see also that for for each okay sorry and each borrowers can also borrow multiple books right so now in this database we are not building the database for just one book we are building we are building the database for multiple books so now I would have to change it since it's not for just one book so it's a many-to-many -many relationship the the cardinality is many-to-many -many. so we have many books can be borrowed by many borrowers and also we have many borrowers can um, loan or let me say loan or borrow so now many many borrowers can actually borrow uh, many books as well so that's the relationship now in this case we have a many-to-many -many relationship i really forgot to mention that but i'm glad we didn't skip that so um thank you very much for listening and i'll catch you in the next session bye